So without any further ado, hand over to John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting uh, FSTAR to talk about how to translate a technology platform into uh, a product pipeline, more specifically an oncology pipeline. Um, FSTAR, we see that as a potentially a leading company within uh, biospecific antibody technology. We are, all uh, operations are now uh, collected in Cambridge and, uh, and uh, the company has undergone quite a bit of change over the last uh, uh, two years. Uh, we now have a focus within oncology, um, in ERP and uh, immuno-oncology uh, targeting. Uh, and what I'd like to talk about is a little bit about the journey that we've been on to, to get to where we are today. So we have a, a very experienced management team with uh, people with experience from both uh, big pharma and, uh, and biotech and, and of course also academia uh, prior to that. And, uh, and, and one of the questions that uh, we sort of struggled with uh, um, early on in, 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 in antibody technology is, uh, is two antibodies or uh, is bispecific antibodies, is that a benefit over individual antibodies? And that's uh, very much a translational question. Uh, I've been working in, in Sympogen in the past, uh, also in Implone and, and now with FSTAR. Sympogen is a, an antibody mixture company. Uh, Implone is a traditional monoclonal antibody company and then FSTAR is a bispecific antibody company. So I've, I've tried a little bit of everything and, and seen the um, translational challenges in all of these uh, platforms. When you look at it from the point of view of monoclonal antibodies, when you mix them together, you can have additive or synergistic effects. And, and these are, are complicated uh, effects to study. Uh, what you see here in this diagram is from a published study from Symphogen where uh, two different antibodies on their own have a certain activity in animals in killing a tumor. This is the untreated uh, animals. And you see the tumors growing right rapidly. This is Erbitox, uh, a marketed product. And then you see these two antibodies in combination. They really uh, remove uh, the tumor quite efficiently. Something you can show in, in translational modeling. Uh, interestingly, you cannot predict uh, which are the best antibodies to combine into, into one molecule or, or into uh, one product. Uh, this is another study also looking at uh, the translational challenge of, uh, of finding synergy or effects of combinations. And here you see two uh, uh, different antibodies that are targeting uh, immunological uh, regul regulator uh, antigens, uh, CTLA-4 or PD-1. And, and when you combine those two antibodies, again uh, in a mouse uh, model experiment, you see a very dramatic uh, improvement of the effect. Uh, so you might then ask, uh, why then bispecific when you can do all this with combinations? And, and, and really what we're trying to do in STAR is to combine uh, pathway blockade into one molecule, either to block two epitopes on the same antigen uh, to uh, generate synergy uh, through blocking separate uh, receptors on the same cell, uh, so have uh, orthogonal uh, blockade of two receptor tyrosine kinases at the same time. Uh, also, you can envision having a blockade of a receptor tyrosine kinase and a ligand at the same time, and thereby having synergy. Uh, another strategy for bispecifics is to uh, basically use uh, one of the uh, antibody arms to uh, affect the uh, um, uh, immune cell effector function recruitment to the tumor tissue. Uh, and then you can also uh, try to use uh, the one specificity of the antibody to, to generate the tissue targeting uh, of your other uh, arm of the antibody. Those are sort of the main principles uh, for why bispecifics. This is a classic structure to use, so the normal antibody, and then you put on the single chain FV uh, fusion protein here against a separate antigen, so combining uh, IGF and EGF uh, receptor specificity into one molecule published by uh, Biogen, and here you see why. So you have uh, uh, the individual antibodies here, so this component plus this component, but not built into one molecule. And then you have the bispecific down here having a synergy, a, a stronger activity. Uh, interestingly, if you s s uh, switch the orientation of the molecule, so this line up here, then you don't see uh, any synergy. So clearly, there's a translational challenge in figuring out what's the best uh, uh, structure, what's the best format. So there's a very strong need for sophisticated biology-based screening to actually identify the right combinations, the right uh, structures of your, your molecule. And there's a strong need for uh, modularity. And that's one of the reasons that we're very uh, excited about the STAR platform, that it is a highly modular platform. The way the technology works is we have the FCAP. It's the constant region of the antibody. And basically, we have taken the, the normal constant region of the antibody and engineered in a new antigen binding site in the tip of the opposite end of the, 
the normal business end of the antibody. And this really is a drug in its own right. It has FC receptor function binding capability. It has a neutralizing activity, for example, against a receptor if, if, uh, if engineered in the right way. And then the ability to then modularly put this into the context of another antibody is a key feature uh, of the platform. And we can do this in an almost high throughput manner, uh, basically taking the FCAP and putting it into, uh, quickly into the context of a lot of parental maps and use that to, to screen and identify the right combinations. So what's the challenge then? And, and this, this is uh, in terms of understanding the driver for <coughs> Uh, for the, the, the change in the company that uh, we're moving from a, from a technology platform company to a product uh, company. I'm, I'm curious about this, uh, this concept, the burning platform. Uh, so this was coined by Daryl Connor, who was looking at uh, what is it that drives change in entrepreneurial companies. And he was looking at, at uh, this experience from Piper Alpha. Um, it, this was a, an oil drilling platform that burned. And, and A. Mochen, who was uh, one of the survivors, he said, it was fire jump, so I jumped. And he had to jump 20 meters to, to survive uh, this uh, fire. And, and this guy, Dale Connor, he said, so the commitment of leaders in, in biotech or elsewhere uh, showed towards initiative was not simply because they understood where they were going and, and had a clear understanding of what they wanted to achieve. It was also because they had a sense of distress towards the situation they were in uh, and they wanted to change, but maybe didn't really know how to change it. And the high cost of maintaining just what existed uh, was uh, an important driver and motivational factor for them to actually want to, to execute change. And um, so you, you might think, OK, the platform is burning in, in FSTAR. And it is really on fire, so it works very well. This is uh, what has happened over the time. So we've, uh, we've really in in increased the way uh, the platform works, if you look at it with some simple me uh, metrics. But the platform that is burning is the business platform. So we have investors, and, and they put money into the company. But they're also looking for an exit. And if you look at from the point of view of a platform technology company, where were we? So we had this kinds of, of business platform. We were uh, selling deals to uh, Berger Ingelheim and, and Mark Serono, very interesting deals. And if you look at the paper value, 164 million or 180 million euro per target. Really, all of that is backloaded. All of that is money down, down the road. Uh, but the near-term value driver in the company is not very significant from, uh, from these kinds of deals. So if you look at it from the point of view of a business platform, being a technology company, it's not really a sustainable platform if you look at the uh, cost of capital. So that's what really drove uh, the transition from being a technology platform company to being a product development uh, company. So uh, from prior to 2011, perhaps, or it's a gradual, I mean, there's no finite cut point, but uh, of, prior to that time, it was a technology platform company, uh, very much focused on really implementing and developing the platform. Uh, we had uh, perhaps somewhat uh, of a uh, monoclonal antibody engineering mindset in the company, and we had these discovery collaborations. And what, where we are now is with chosen a focus uh, in oncology. We have chosen also to work with antibody drug conjugates, uh, which is uh, clearly related to this. Uh, we are only in Cambridge, and, uh, and uh, we are hiring, to a large extent, drug developers into the company now. Uh, and then uh, our business development aspirations are to have more strategic uh, partnerships that are leveraging our in-house capabilities. So back to uh, what we're doing. This is uh, in oncology one of our compounds, and, and, and again, what you can see here is that this compound is really able to, uh, the, on this scale here, you have the tumor size in these animal models, gastric tumor, uh, another patient gastric tumor in, in mouse models, and another uh, tumor this time colorectal. Uh, and as you can see, we have a compound that really uh, is able to completely uh, melt away the tumors in, in these uh, models. And the, the blue and green lines up here are standards of care. Uh, against the same target. Uh, another uh, aspect of, of the translational work you have to do in, in oncology is very much to, to work with the biomarker concept. So how can you identify the right patients, those patients that are going to respond to your compound? Uh, and, and for this particular compound I just showed you, we have a biomarker which uh, is able to, with almost 100% certainty, predict uh, out of these uh, patient-derived uh, uh, xenograft models in mice uh, which ones will basically respond uh, 
to the to the compound and which ones won't uh, respond to the uh, to the compound. And, and this aspect of uh, of having uh, a combined uh, drug discovery with the, with the development questions such as what are the the patient uh, subpopulations that will respond to your tumor are are hard questions that you really need to address experimentally moving into oncology. So uh, in my final slides, uh, just an overview of the pipeline. As I mentioned, we have a focus in oncology, two projects here, and, and a number of recent projects uh, in uh, immuno-oncology really targeting this whole space of immune checkpoint regulators. And then uh, the rest of the therapeutic areas, we are, we are continuing, of course, working with our partners and, and leveraging uh, those uh, therapeutic areas uh, in the context of our partner programs. Uh, a brief overview of, of the various uh, formats that we generate, of course, uh, by specifics, as I mentioned, uh, but also FCAPs in their own right and FCAP uh, drug conjugates for targeting toxins to tumor tissue. And with that, I think I managed to squeeze in time for one or two questions. John, that was tremendous. <coughs> You did that in, in less than in about 11 minutes. Sorry for the rapid speak. <laughs> so we've actually got uh, some time for questions for John if um, people have got them in the audience. Yes. I just wanted to ask whether by putting um, a variable region on the um, FC portion, uh, you affect um, the antigenicity at all? Yes, it's a very good question. Uh, most likely, yes, there will be uh, an increased risk of uh, engin uh, immunogenicity. Um, so there's lots of uh, molecules uh, where the wild type sequence has been modified and changed and then introduced into humans. So there's, in fact, antibodies themselves. If you think about humanized antibodies from mice, they are also antigenic for the same reason. Uh, there's uh, adnectins, which has been used as a scaffold for making binding domains. And in most cases, and in fact quite, quite rarely, do you see clinically meaningful immunogenicity. So you'll see some, uh, new, uh, some uh, antibodies appearing, but not necessarily uh, impacting the, the pharmacology of the compound. But it's something we still need to address. We haven't gone in man yet. Yes. yes. Speak up. I don't, can you hear me from here? Yes, if you shout. I just I'm interested in the, the change in strategy between um, going from the, the platform. But was that driven by the management or, or by the, the VCs? And, or was it a mix of the two? Both, and, yeah. And were there any issues with so, changing your story? <clears throat> so uh, th there is a... There's a lot of stuff you can talk about here, and, and, and some is private and some is, is not so private. But, but uh, there is a change in management going on at the same time. Um, and there's an investor-driven uh, discussion about where should we go and how should we go about it. And, and so there's, um, there's probably, to a large extent initially, an investor push, but, but obviously uh, you have to own it and, and, and you have to, to become, uh, become a, a driver of that process to be successful. So in that whole dialogue, it becomes, uh, and, and very much is a management-driven uh, change process and also the direction and the focus is management owned and, and driven. So I think because investors cannot align and decide on a specific thing like that, they can only create the circumstances that make, make, it, uh, become, make it necessary. And it is very necessary because uh, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, they, they, they will be looking for value creation. Uh, they are all looking for value creation and, and if, you just have a, if you just have a platform that you're, you're sort of in want for a function of, uh, you're not going to be successful in the eyes of investors. So, so the fundamental nurturing of that situation was investor created, but it was, the process was totally driven by management. Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. So one of the things about platform companies that always fascinates me is when you're developing your product, you've got a couple of choices. One is it's a new platform, so do you partner? Yeah. And partner early, so you're developing on somebody else's dollar. And then the second one is how do you choose what you develop yourselves? Yeah. Where's your risk point going to be? So that's where I like the burning platform uh, metaphor because uh, you, you have, so we are in a situation where you have very limited data available uh, and you have to make a leap. Uh, so you, you, you just you realize if I stay, I'm going to fry. So I have to make the jump, and you have to, to, to try to, uh, to, to jump in the best direction possible. Uh, and you, you do it quickly, uh, because otherwise the money runs out. 
sure. Uh, and and obviously, if you're setting your technology platform company up from the beginning and you're conscious of this, you can mitigate this as you go along. Uh, but this is a company that existed since 2006, and and uh, and and I mean, really did a phenomenal job uh, the whole company in actually establishing the platform. But but there was a, a drag period where the transition, perhaps. Uh, uh, from the point of view, and investors uh, did not go fast enough. Because sure. okay. sometimes you're locked and loaded. Once you've chosen those targets, you're yeah. locked. And then you become committed, and yeah. so you cannot get back on the platform. You're locked in. Is there any other questions? Okay, last one. So you, you, you've had experience of, of both polyclonal approaches and now yeah. approaches. And monoclonal. And monoclonal. In nimclonal, yeah. yeah. Yes, and monoclonals. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's one platform that will ever fill uh, fill it all. There's no one size fit all in here. So, so Symphogen's is is clearly successful with their mixture against EGFR, uh, and I can see many applications of uh, um, a HER2 antibody with something else uh, that would also require a bispecificity would not work in a, in in a combination. But you have to 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 look hard at the biology you're you're addressing and, and make sure that you that you have support in your translational uh, science for, for the concept you're using. And obviously monoclones are successful also. Thank you. Thank you. John, thanks very much indeed.